Hello everyone, and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School course, and my name is Mike Thompson. Now, as you go through the online learning course with Epic, understand these videos just supplement and parallel that course. In addition to that online course and these videos, be sure to review this material with your flight instructor. So what are we talking about today? Today, we want to talk about fuel injection systems. Specifically, we're looking at the 172S model. We're going to trace the fuel from the wing tanks all the way to the cylinder. All right, you ready for this little journey? Yeah! Here we go. This is the schematic that you're going to find in your POH. We start up here at the top in the wing tanks. Now, already, right out of the gate, I want you to notice two things. The first thing to notice is that these tanks each have a fuel gauge. And this fuel gauge must indicate accurately. If you've ever heard that fuel gauges only need to be accurate when the tank is empty, that's a misconception. These fuel tanks have to indicate accurately and the gauges must show zero when the tanks have unusable fuel. Wait a minute, unusable fuel? Why would I have fuel in my tanks that I can't use? Well, that's the second thing I want you to notice. Take a look at this wing tank here and see where the fuel is drawn from the tank. Notice it's not drawn from the bottom of the tank. It's drawn near the bottom of the tank, but from the side. The reason for that is an extra precaution to prevent any contaminants from clogging up that uh, the fuel pickup off of the tank. Okay, so pay close attention to that. If we draw the fuel down to the level where it's being picked up out of the tank there, there'll be a little bit of fuel left over and that's unusable fuel. So let's continue the journey. From the tank, the fuel flows by gravity down these lines to the fuel selector. At the fuel selector, we see a drain valve. That's accessed from the bottom of the airplane when we're taking fuel samples. Now, the fuel selector on the 172 will allow you to select left, right, or both tanks. From that fuel selector, the fuel moves forward to what we call a reservoir tank. Now, this reservoir holds a couple of gallons, and it serves the purpose of, think about it as stabilizing the fuel flow from the tanks into the engine. So you see that reservoir tank here. It takes fuel from both of the wing tanks and kind of has a nice little stabilized uh, quantity here to feed the engine. The next item in the schematic you're going to see is an auxiliary fuel pump. It's auxiliary, meaning it's additional, it's secondary, it's a backup. This fuel pump is driven electrically, and you see that right here. It's called the auxiliary fuel pump, and the little lightning bolt means that it's driven electrically. You've got a switch on your panel to turn it on and off. Now, at that point, the fuel will flow from the cabin side of the aircraft through the firewall to the engine side of the aircraft. At that firewall, is a shutoff valve. Here is that shutoff valve depicted. That shutoff valve is controlled by you, the pilot. There's a red knob in the cockpit, and if you pull that, you can shut this fuel off. Your flight instructor will work with you on that. That is there in the event of an emergency. 
Now we are forward of the firewall. When a pilot says forward of the firewall, we mean we are on the engine side of the firewall. And as we continue our journey, what's the first thing we find? The fuel strainer. From the fuel strainer, fuel is routed to, hey, look at that, it's another fuel pump. But notice this one is engine driven. This fuel pump is mounted on the engine and when the engine turns, this fuel pump turns and is moving fuel. This engine driven fuel pump moves that fuel to the fuel air control unit. Now, if you have studied carburetors, this is where the big difference occurs. This fuel air control unit does not mix the fuel and air. It controls the amount of air that flows to the intake manifold, and it controls the amount of fuel that flows to the fuel distribution valve. It does not mix them. We'll get to injection in just a second. Once that fuel air control unit determines how much air and how much fuel is needed, that fuel quantity is sent to the fuel distribution valve. Now, if you take a look at it here, it might look like uh, some kind of a little insect, maybe legs sticking out of it. You might hear pilots refer to this as the spider valve. So have no fear, there's no spiders in your engine. It's sometimes called the spider valve. This spider valve has a line to each of the four cylinders. And the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder head alongside the air that's coming from the air intake valve. Hence the term fuel injection. Now that fuel injection, once it's in the cylinder, then we start that four stroke cycle, intake, combustion, power, and exhaust. That's a separate video. So folks, that's about it today for the fuel injection system on the 172S model. See you next time.